their healing will take place. Father, we ask in this time of need in our world, Father, we ask that you let us have the ability and the light to go within and to find that peace, that we can be that peace. Father, we thank you for allowing us the privilege of being in your chapel today. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. And let us sing the prayer. Melissa is, her daughter is giving birth to a child today. So that's a good thing. And today we're going to have healing minister Randy Gilbert doing the scripture reading today. Randy? Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. I'm actually doing uh, more of a spiritual reading, and I'm taking it from Michael Smith, the contemporary Christian songwriter and artist from his book, and I'll do some paraphrasing. However, it's in tune with keeping friends and people who are close to you um, in your resource aspect for everyday living. And this is how it goes. At times, I have acted like a temperamental artist or just a spoiled kid about situations in my life. I don't recommend that you let people just take pot shots at you, but I have truly experienced the benefits of people who have the freedom to challenge my thinking and ask me hard questions about life. You need a few people like that around you. Your life will be richer for forging a relationship with friends so committed to you that they will not tolerate you getting away with or sweeping dirt under the rug and being responsible for your actions on a daily basis. There's a flip side to the story because there's also good things that come out of it. Just as scripture says that we are to mourn with those who mourn, that we get to rejoice with those who rejoice, and when we can share in the birth or the death of a person, that we truly take that to heart and to show people sympathy and apathy. We are meant to be joined at the heart to each other. We are meant for relationships with each other and with God. Often just an example of our parents and a Christian friend can help us to live better lives. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. How appropriate. I don't know, I'm not going to be speaking on what Melissa has the title. My title is Life. Yesterday I was honored to do a funeral for a lady who was 47 years old. And last night I went home and I had to do a whole lot of uh, uh, releasing because it was a very difficult situation. As I sit in this church, I know at times we all have our favorite places, but we're sitting as a unit. We're not sitting in sections because we don't like each other or that we have problems with each other. And this is what happened yesterday. It was divided. And it was so divided it was very disturbing and very difficult to, to deliver what was needed to be said. And we know that Catherine was with us all the time because my sister Joyce saw her sitting on the chair aside of her. So that was a wonderful experience and the gift for Joyce. But as I was there, I'm wondering, my heart was hurting so much at a time like this 
and people should be halfway getting together, but they were so separated in life. So when I went home, I was thinking about this. You know, God gave us a gift. He gave us life. And what are we doing with this life? Do we choose to stay in the lower, denser vibrations of life? Or we, do we get up and we do something about it? You know, we can sit and complain all our life. And I understand this, this woman had a very, very, very hard life. And you know, it's sad at a funeral when you have to worry about the ex-husband coming in the door to, to disarm everybody. That was scary for the undertaker. He's never experienced this. For he was young. But you know, as I sat there and I prayed, and I thought, let there has to be some kind of unity here, because I know what I was going to do. But you know, the whole thing changed when you get up there and you see that, because then it's your job as a minister to deliver something that that family needs at that time. So when I brought this home, and I'm going out in, in, in the office there, and I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm going, my life is so short. We can choose the chaos in life, or we can choose spirituality, and that choice is truly ours. And I know a lot of you, including me, we all had that fork in the road that said, I can go this way, or I could go this way. How many people had that here? Absolutely. Do you think that was a being reborn to the spiritual part of your soul? Absolutely. Because spirit took you back on that correct pathway. It didn't let you go on the other pathway. And I believe that's rebirth right there. Changing your life in a direction that's a positive way. And you know that I was thinking, oh my goodness, what did I hear there? I heard nothing but judgments. This one about this one, this one about this one, this one about this one, and I'm going, wow, why, what am I to learn from all of this? What am I to learn to share with all of this? Well, whether they were great or small, you know what's sad? I didn't hear one of those people that were sitting there, except her son, say she was a great mother. You know how sad that is? It was sad. You know, and I know we, it's very hard to separate ourselves with these judgment issues. But you know, metaphysically, every time we judge someone else, what are we doing? We have the reflection of ourself. And if we don't learn anything else today, let us absorb that. You know, God offers us the state of grace, of loving grace. And God knows our pain in a crisis. And we know the world sure is in crisis today. But do we have to feed into that crisis or are we going to lift above it and pray and have the faith and have that hope and know that the loving grace of God will save all of us? I don't believe the world's coming to an end, do you? No. Absolutely not. So we got to extend our world to a loving, peaceful world. And where does that all start? Right in here. You know, God created you as a unique being of light. When you were that spirit, you were full of light. When you came into this earth, and what happened? What happened? We absorbed all of this gunk, and we left it go, and we left it go, and we created this mess. All of everybody in the world today, I am sure, and I'm saying this with, with uh, everyone, and I'm talking about every nationality, every religion, everything in this world created this mess in this world today. How many people agree to that? 
So I think God's looking down and he's saying, well, no, I'm going to let them fight for themselves here and fend for themselves. I gave them the light. I gave them everything they needed. And look what they did with it. So it's up to us to get ourselves up and get ourselves moving in that direction. So I believe, I believe truly, we might have a small group here. We might not have millions of people that we're speaking to. But I want to tell you something. In the Bible it states, and the last shall be first. Now think about that. Our thinking, our positive creation that we had, that this church was begun on, can go further into the positive light. I believe that, do you? Yes. Absolutely. Do you believe that this vision can be created? <laughs> Absolutely. But we got to work as a unit, not as a separate little unit. We can't have three people here, three people there, and three people there and all have the same idea. You know, I was listening to the prayer this morning, and you know, it was better. We're getting in unison. Did everybody notice that? Yes. It wasn't one person louder than another person. Or that. It was a starting to grow in unison. That's what God wants. That's what God wants. See, when we move in that direction of divine love, the divine love of God, he gave us a gift. He gave us a big gift. He gave each one a special gift. All we need to do is open the gift. Open the gift. Look it. Look in the gift. And absorb that precious, that precious gift. He gave you air to breathe. He gave you love in your heart for your children, for your husband, for your mothers, for your fathers. Somewhere along the line, we took that gift and pushed it aside. But now I'm telling you, each of us have a gift of a new opportunity. An opportunity to expand our awareness. An opportunity for a new spiritual journey. But we have to choose it. We have to choose it. On this journey and this path, we have to do one thing. And very few people do this. They do not accept themselves for who or where they are in life. They don't accept themselves for their shortcomings and say, okay, I'm short here. I, I know I need to improve here, so let me try to do it. It's very hard to admit to yourself that you have any faults because of ego. But you know, when you accept yourself for who you are, where you've been and what you've done, and start releasing that, and you all should be in our class, right? You would learn how to do this in, in, in a, a, a slower way that you can easily make the transition into spirituality. And you know, when you're on this journey and you, 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 you start to look at all this and you accept yourself and you start overcoming your mis, mis, misgivings in life and stop blaming everybody and judging everybody that I could have, I should have, I did. You know, then the path will open up to you for great wisdom. It will open to you for deeper compassion. And I'll tell you, I really think... I think in this world, sometimes we need to have greater compassion. Not the compassion that enables a person not to grow, but compassion to have someone open up to love. Love them enough to tell them the truth. That, that's, how, how, how many people would accept that? How many people could accept that? Love them enough to tell them the truth. That's very important. Because 
as you do that, you're going to learn to love yourself on a greater level. You know, it's your choice, it's your world. The world is you. Each delightful thing you see is you. You look at that candle flame and it reflects back to you, doesn't it? Each person that you look at is you. They might sound different, doesn't it? But actually it's true. Because why? We're all related in God's light. You might not like someone's actions, you might not like the actions, but what are you doing to help them with it? Each dream you have is your dream. Now all you've got to do is put the dream in action. But according to some dreams, I don't know if we want to put them in action. <laughs> I had this silly dream, i got to share that with you. I dreamt that I was touched by my finger here and this big balloon grew on my finger. And I wanted to get rid of this balloon. And the person said, matter of fact, the person was in a space suit when they touched my finger. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember my dream. So anyway, I said, I want to get rid of this. So meanwhile, they said, oh no, you can't. So I tore it off. And he said, well, now you're going to have to wear the shoes. And he... <laughs> And I got these shoes that were big platforms with glitter on them and ankle straps. And I'm going, I can't wear these shoes. Now, what, I need to really research this one. But you see, that was like a waking up dream this morning. But it's telling me, you know, get with it. Because maybe we're going to have all these things happen to us. And we got to be prepared. So we got to remember every time we look in that mirror, see God's beauty. Not the beauty of your face, of your hair, but look in your eyes and see the beauty that God gave you and those shining eyes. Look at, look at yourself. And you know, every action that we focus on is our creation. How many people agree with that? Oh, yes. If you focus on negativity, what are you going to have? <laughs> And it's going to roll with you. Roll. And you know some people can't find anything right with anything. Pray for those individuals to see and understand. Because they're really a lost, lost soul. Now how can we do this? How can we start? Well, when you walk in the grass, now it might be a little mushy with mud. And let the mud squish up in your shoes a little bit. And you know that's God's earth. God created that wonderful earth for you to walk on. He created grass for you to go on your bare feet with. And we got to take that as a gift. You know, sometimes we hear the wind go woo, howling through the house. How many people automatically get the fear? If we remove that fear and listen to the wind as music, it will never hurt you. Let the wind give you the message. Let the rain give you a message of growth. Every new seed needs to be watered. Respect the sunshine when you see the sunshine. That's all part of life that we need to cultivate on a better level. Let us see with our eyes. See with our eyes. Listen to what I'm telling you. See with your eyes the heart within you. Wow, you're saying, I don't know if I can do that. Then get a picture of a heart and start looking at it. That you can see your heart whole, healthy. Get a picture of a healthy heart. And look at that picture every day and see that heart just filling up with love and light. And put that impression into your mind. Because a lot of these things start, negativity starts within the mind. How many people believe that? 
Absolutely. Everything we're introduced to, I know we have a lot of controversy on this because I know today's, net, today's TV and things around us is nothing but violence and negativity. Three quarters of it simply are. And a lot of people say, it's oh, it's just a story. No. It goes in the subconscious mind. It might not affect you now, but it's going to affect you down the road somewhere. How about that young actor that just died in a hotel room? Keith Ledger. Okay, Keith Ledger. You know, I heard a story about him that's saying he played this role, this evil man in Superman or something. No, Batman. Batman. And you know, it was so overcoming to him. He talked to his friends about it. He didn't know if he could even finish it because it was consuming him. It was dark, 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 evil. Think about that. Think about that. You know, and I, I, how many people watch Medium? How many times has that stuff been horrible, huh? I, I just don't think we need to have that. We need to be removed from the fear, not be afraid of spirit, but to embrace spirit in love and light. And sometimes I don't see that message there. Because we know as we go, you ever see these crowds, like in other countries, cheering and cheering for something they don't know what they're cheering for. It just becomes mob. Colleges do that sometimes. It's mob instigated, and they just cheer and yell and cheer and yell. It's all in negativity, and they hit themselves and all these things. Well, this is what they believe. But what the thing is, it's a, they're listening to one leader. They're not letting their own minds tell them what their heart wants them to know. So they've got to be one of the group. See what I'm saying? So in the world today, when we have all of these things going on, we don't need to have that throaty thing coming out with those raspy uh, messages that they give that are negativity and you hear it, you put it on television and they're telling you yelling kill, kill, kill and uh, all this and they're, you know, it's very disheartening. We don't need to be a part of that. And what are they doing to their throat chakra, huh? Think about that, my friends. Also, we've got to remember that God gave us this heart, and this heart is a great system that works within us, that keeps us everything ticking in our body. Why shouldn't we take care of it? I like to look at it like a filtering system. And this filtering system stays pretty well filtered until we kind of clog it up. <laughs> but sometimes we clog it up with what? Our thoughts, they all get filtered through the heart. So you can choose what you want. If you combine the mind and the heart in truth, my friends, it would be a wonderful way to live. And that's, we need to strive to do that. To let our heart and our mind start to get together. If your mind tells you something and your heart says, I shouldn't do it, and your mind argues with your heart, stop and think. You stop and think and say, now let's compromise and then let, let it take over. That's a time to meditate. Because you know what? Your heart is going to lead you to the correct choices. It will. Within the heart and the mind are all the answers that you will ever need in life if you work on that and combine it and filter it for the goodness and grace of God because that's the gift you received. How do we start this? Number one, we start forgiving. Forgiving ourselves and all others, accepting ourselves, who we are, then work on ourselves, and then we get a chance to release it in love and light, and not, not, and, and have it, have it taken away. We've got to release all the negative actions and set them up to God for the etheric to, to cleanse it. That's what we need to do. The minute you think something wrong, let's start cleansing it immediately. And it won't get out there in the ethers. You know, computers always have a delete button. Have your mind have a delete button. And we're all guilty. We're all guilty. 
We can be very simple. You know, God isn't complicated at all. We make God complicated. We take just one moment of his loving grace and we take that moment and step inside our heart with God's grace within us. And we leave our personality on one side and the ego on the other and we go directly into the heart with God's divine grace. Do you know the peace that we would all feel? If we could send that message out into the world for one exercise, do you know how they would feel? Everybody would get that peaceful mode. Because you know what? I believe, this is my truth, that the heart is a divine, sacred instrument that we were given as a gift. We were born in the spirit of love. We were created in the spirit of love. So when we have this love flow through us and send out all the colors of love that go with it, that come from out the heart, to all your friends, family, we will all have that peace the peace of one heart being one unit and that is life god bless you god bless you thank you